we're looking at reaction rates here and um, reaction rate is going to be the speed of a reaction measured as the change in concentration of a reactant or product over the change in time. So let's say the change in product over the change in time, that's our rate. In other words, how fast a reaction happens. That's what reaction rates are. So we've got that definition. Another thing that we want to remember is what an energy diagram looks like. So if we have energy and then we have reaction progress, we have reactants, we have products, we have some activation energy, um, and our activation energy, again, is the energy from reactants up to that transition state. And if I use a catalyst, then I'm able to lower that activation energy. Um, and so a catalyst is a substance that gives me a lower energy pathway to my products. So that's just some things to review as we jump into reaction rates. And one more piece with our energy diagram was up at the top here, we had our transition state. Um, and our transition state is important here um, because our transition state we had said was the same as having effective collisions between molecules. And the more collisions that we have, the faster the reaction is gonna go. So we kinda wanna think about colliding molecules as we work on this page. So we're gonna think about food spoiling because we all know that, we try to avoid it at home. Um, so if we have a fresh apple, it has no color, but then as my apple starts to get old and spoil, it starts to turn brown. Or blue in my picture here um, and this reaction happens faster when you have the enzyme polyphenol oxidase so that's um, a catalyst um, helping the reaction go faster so let's think about um, with food okay um, if I want my food to not spoil um, then I'm thinking how do I slow this reaction down um, so one way to keep your food fresh and slow the reaction down is to put it in the refrigerator or put it in the freezer so we could say that at low temperatures, like the refrigerator or the freezer, um, then my food is going to be slower to react. And I can put that in terms of energy and collisions. I could say um, I have less energy um, for effective collisions. And so, low temperatures give me these slow reaction rates. In contrast, you're out at a picnic or something like that in the summertime and you have relatively high temperatures, your food is all going to spoil quickly, right? So then it would be faster to spoil. And that's because you have more energy provided for those collisions. So if it's warm outside, all the things in your food are colliding, colliding, colliding really quickly, and your food's gonna go bad quickly. So we put things in the refrigerator. The next thing we're gonna look at that affects reaction rate is the concentration of reactants. And one of the reactants that you can see in this reaction up here is oxygen. The more oxygen you give your food, the faster it spoils, right? That's why we vacuum seal it and can it and all those things to keep the oxygen away from our food. So if we have less oxygen in this case, which is one of our reactants, um, then we'll find that our food is slower to react. We have a slower reaction rate. Um, and that would be because there's less oxygen, there's less chance for these two to collide. Um, so we have less collisions just because there's less O2. Kind of like when the freeways are empty, you don't have as many accidents, as long as everyone's not driving crazy, because if there's less people, there's less things to crash into. Um, in contrast, if we have high levels of oxygen, say I cut that apple in half, now it's exposed to a lot of oxygen. And so now there's a lot of oxygen, it's going to be faster to react or faster to spoil, and that's because I'm having more collisions, all right? Lastly, we're going to look at catalysts and how they affect our reaction rates. So thinking about catalysts, um, remember we have our energy diagram over here and a catalyst makes a reaction go faster. 
Um, so I'm going to say, first of all, with a catalyst, my rate is going to be fast because I have that helper, like we saw on the last slide, um, to make that reaction happen. Um, I have less energy required, so it's easier to go from reactants to products. Um, in my picture up here, um, the catalyst is present naturally in the fruit, polyphenol oxidase, and so if that catalyst is there, then I'm going to brown really quickly. So we spend our lives trying not to let our apples brown or our avocados brown or our food go bad. And so if we think about some of the things we do to preserve our food, um, some of those things are affecting the catalyst. All right. So we can either take away the catalyst or we can also break the catalyst. And we'll learn more about that um, later in the semester. Um, but if we can somehow harm that catalyst, then our food won't spoil so quickly. Um, so some of the things we do to keep our food from spoiling quickly, um, you can put some lemon juice on your fruit or on your avocados, um, and in doing that you're adding acid. Um, also, something like meat, we often preserve by just salting it, turning it into some kind of um, beef jerky or something like that. Um, or you can also add lots of heat, not just a little bit of heat, but a lot of heat, and a lot of heat will actually unwind or denature that enzyme, and now it won't work anymore. So once all of those break my catalyst, instead of it being an easy reaction, that goes away, and now it requires a lot of energy for the reaction to happen. Um, so I go back to my uncatalyzed reaction, and that means that it is a slower reaction. So sometimes you want that catalyst, but sometimes you're like, eh, let me break that catalyst and that way my food won't spoil so quickly. Um, so you can practice some of those concepts over here. Um, we won't do this concentration of reactants here, um, but you can think about milk, um, which has lactose in it, fermenting and turning into um, lactic acid is one of the byproducts of that.